All right, it's another day here. Um, but first off, I'm gonna start with the exhaust manifold. Now this gets torqued up to 24 Newton meters each bolt. And then from there we can button up the exhaust uh, and the rest of the engine bay hopefully. So here we go. everything in here pretty much bolts in. Uh, there are a few things I'm noticing that don't bolt in. Uh, one of them is this mount for the radiator uh, and the other thing is the throttle cable. They're two different lengths so I'll need to swap over the throttle cables in the other car and then uh, just run a nut and bolt for this mount. There's a hole here it's just got no thread in it uh, and, and then other than that it's uh, everything seems to be going together just fine. It's a new day again. Um, last night I managed to get pretty much everything in the engine connected. Uh, the only things left are now are the, uh, the catalytic converter and the distributor. And then I gotta do all the fluids and then we can turn the key and hopefully it'll start. Uh, I'm gonna wait for my friend Chris to get here to help me with the installation of the distributor. Uh, he's got a better understanding of that than I do, so we'll wait for him. Uh, in the meantime, while I'm waiting, I'm going to put the interior back together. Um, after doing the locks in the door, uh, I broke the cap on the back here, which holds the tweeter in. So I've had to wait for the glue to dry on that before I could reinstall the door card. But the locks and the electric mirrors are good to go in there. So we can throw this back on. Uh, and then we can throw all the uh, interior trims back on, put the seats back in, and, and we'll be that little bit closer to finishing it off. And if uh, Chris doesn't get here by then, I will work on the suspension, the axles, the front hubs, and the brakes. So there's still a bit to do, but I'm pretty confident we can get all of that done today uh, and potentially even take it for a bit of a test drive. Good? No. <laughs> no. Still not in frame. Why am I so tall? Um, what am I saying? Chris is here now. Um, he's going to install a distributor for me. Uh, I've never done this and he's done it a few times so he's a bit more knowledgeable. Um, you might remember him from a few other videos where we did the chassis swap on his Hilux Surf. and the diff locker in the My Hilux. <laughs> so Chris is gonna run us through what we need to do, which is cool. Um, first thing we're gonna do guys is we're gonna find top dead center on cylinder one. Uh, probably the best way to verify that is to take out number one spark plug, look straight down and make sure the piston's at the top of its stroke. 
Um, and then what we're going to do there is we're going to line up the distributor with number one. I don't know if you guys can see that. So number one's there, runs down in the back of there. It's going to be, I don't know if you can see that, that one there. And we're just going to make sure that's lined up with that. And um, usually on some of the big port models, there's a detent, a little spot there, and it corresponds, but this is a small pot, it's a little different, but um, we'll get there anyway. All right, cool, let's do it. Oh, there it is. All right, there's a little notch on that cam lobe. That's an indicator that the cams are in the right position. True? It is, yeah. Yeah, it's another way of uh, telling you if you're at top dead center on cylinder one. All right, so we're on the right track. I usually fuck up at this point. Excellent. So now what? Do we just put the distributor in? I usually do it with the cam cover off so I can see the markings. So we've just taken the cam cover off. Um, we want to check the timing, make sure nothing's moved since the engine's gone in, and we've realized that it has moved. So we're going to just turn the crank pulley, get the uh, the notches on the cams lined up so that that indicates top dead center, and then it's just another step that we can take to ensure that the distributor goes in and it's not a tooth out to the left or a tooth out to the right. So uh, it might be a case of trial and error, but first things first, we're just gonna get the gears, the cams and cam gears in the right place. <laughs> Cut. Yeah, I'm not answering that, sorry guys. So Rob here is turning the crank. This one, right? And what we're doing here is we're just making sure these cam gears, you'll see that notch there has to line up with this notch there. Same here, that notch corresponds with that mark on the timing gear, and that's how we know. And then after that, we've got to just double check that we're at top dead center. A piece of number one, yes. That was a drop of water that went straight into my engine. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> now? Now. Now what do we do? Alright, so... Number one is this guy. Is yep. It? He runs down. We need this just about there. That's where it would be. If this cap were to go on, number one would be right there. Alright. So, as you guys probably know, any O-rings, any rubber O-rings and stuff like this, you're always just going to want to give it a bit of oil before you install. It's always just going to help it seal better and help the O-ring not um, fold or scrunch up as you install it. So, what we've done is we figured out number one on the timing cap, which is this. It's going to correspond with the mark I just drew here. So, it's got to be here, we just turn the rotating thingy. The rotor. The rotor, yeah, done. At number one, and we're just going to put it in. And just because these gears are a bit helical, we're just going to turn it just a bit, because when you install it, it's going to turn itself back. So, if everything works out. That should be it there. And it's always fine because you've got a bit of adjustability here. So if you don't get it spot on, that's perfectly fine. We'll tune it later with the timing gun. Tune it with a timing gun. Does that sound right? Time it with a timing gun. Tune it, we're not tuners mate, we're bloody. Fine tuning. We're YouTube mechanics. Fine tuning the uh, that's what I meant. 
Oh fuck it, just leave one out. <laughs> nah, because it, it's always just like on off, on off uh -huh. thing sometimes. So, so we're gonna get the engine cranking now. Yes sir. Uh, well, we'll put some oil in it first. Oil, spark plugs back in. Um, I'll chuck this cap on for you and um, we'll start her up to she runs. What's this pissy intermediate cover? What? What's this cover? I've never seen it. I don't have one. Oh, I had to replace the gaskets on that. I don't know. Oh, no. My 4 is better than yours. What can I say? I've never seen one. It's so hard to get to. <laughs> Okay. It's, I it's usually, an unnecessary. I just usually stick my the hand in there, just like screw it in. So that goes there. Just tuck this one right under here. Like <laughs> Alright, so uh, number one. <laughs> Good. Number one. So number one spark plug is closest to the gears. Number two, number three, number four. And there are, move your hands for a sec, corresponding numbers on the distributor itself. Focus. That's number one. Number two, number three, number four. And that goes to the igniter, which mounts to the strap brace. so we can take it for a drive sooner or later. Oh, ah, stop. Thanks for your help. I'll see you a bit later. Wait. All 
Alright, so we just ran the engine a bit to get it up to temp and it started overheating and we noticed the fans weren't turning on, so Chris is going to go and I'm going to hunt around and try to figure out why the fans weren't turning on. Um, I'm going to check any connections. I'm also going to start checking earths just to make sure the uh, yeah the fans are getting good earth and um, hopefully that'll solve it. If it gets worse than that, then I'll be scratching my head for a while, I think. All right, this is the sensor that goes to the thermostat. Now, when I unplug it, we can hear the fans turn on. So there's got to be an issue somewhere in there. Now I've just turned the heating off inside the car. We'll see if it happens again. Yep. Okay, so I've just plugged this fan back in. Um, now both of them turn on when I unplug this. So we know that the, the fans themselves have good power, good earth. Uh, it's just a matter of them turning on at the right temperature. give this a quick clean. Alright, I've just cleaned the sensor up and I'm also going to thread it back in and then check if it's uh, even getting wet. I'm, uh, I'm starting to suspect there's not enough water in the system and that may have caused the sensor to be reading the air temperature instead of water temperature. So that's not even dry. I'm just going to thread this back in, uh, top up the water and then uh, give it a quick test. I think the issue ended up being a, uh, a dirty temp sensor. As we saw, the fans turn themselves on and off uh, and the engine's not overheating anymore. So what that means is we can get the engine up to temperature, it won't overheat, and then we can use a timing light to set the timing properly. So I'll show you that now. Just before I start getting into this, um, there is two kind of stages to the timing. There's the base timing, which is what we've just seen. Uh, getting the distributor in and the timing kit. Uh, all set to zero basically. This is the next stage is using the timing light to dial in your timing. We want to set the timing to 10 degrees uh, at idle, at temperature, with the engine in the, um, I think it's called diagnostic mode or, or something similar. Uh, what you have to do is short what, two of the plugs together using a paper clip on the diagnostic port up here. And then that will set the engine into diagnostic mode and then we can check our timing. All right, so this is our diagnostic port. So inside we can see coding relating to each pin. Now what we want to bridge is the TE1 and E1 ports. There we go, there's our paper clip. Now we can uh, plug in the timing light. All right, this is our timing light here. That's gonna uh, shoot a pulse of light every time uh, it sees a signal for spark. So you clip this around spark plug wire number one, you connect it to the battery to give it power and earth, and then we can rotate the radio, uh, sorry, uh, we can rotate the distributor cap, uh, and then depending on what we see with the timing light, depends on how much we rotate it and where we leave it. So now we've got to start the engine up.
that's our timing set. So what we're after is 10 degrees. Now, I tried to film, there's a little notch on the uh, crank pulley, which we used to time the engine when we did the timing kit. Um, that notch only illuminates, well the light only illuminates that notch at the precise time that it's in the same spot. When that's happening and you're moving the distributor, you can see that notch, uh, kind of, it's the illusion that it's moving left or right. And you can check that against the numbers printed on the um, timing case. So you can see that notch light up. Um, it should be near zero, depending on how your distributor went in. And then you just twist it. You can hear the engine changing its how it's running. Uh, and hopefully it runs for the better when you get it close to the uh, specified timing from Toyota. So you just, yep, spin the dizzy. Um, check it with the timing light. Uh, and that notch on the crank pulley should line up with um, the number 10. To the left of the zero, uh, you want you want your timing advanced. So that's to the left, and then that's it. Once your once your notch is lining up with that 10, um, tighten the dizzy down. Uh, it won't move, and then you can be assured that your timing is right. Now you might have seen me um, fiddling with a screwdriver near the intake. That was just the idle control. Um, you want to wind that in or out depending on where your idle is sitting uh, and you want that to sit between 900 and 1000 RPM at idle. So a combination of setting the idle right and getting the timing right, uh, you'll get the engine running just how it should be. Alright, it always gets dark pretty quick. Um, I managed to get all the brakes bolted back up. Um, the engine's running, everything's good to go. The last things I have to do now are the sway bar, uh, gearbox fluid, and bolt the exhaust up. So I'm just gonna get out of the car now and finish it off tonight. Sorry about the nausea light, but I am uncovering some of my own dirty history with this car. Um, I got a two and a half inch cat back exhaust put, put on this thing a while ago, um, and that was fine. And then I got some headers for the old engine, and they didn't bolt up to the catalytic converter. So I had that uh, modified for it to work. But now, the catalytic converter that came out of the other car um, is too short. So there's an extra bit of length here, but I really don't want to use this because if you can see, you can see through it. So there's nothing in it. But the issue is the massive restriction where this flange has been welded on. So look at that. Uh, the exhaust is only going to go through that. I don't even think that's a two inch pipe. I'm going to see if I can get that out of there first of all. And uh, if not, I'm just going to bolt the other one on. And get the exhaust modified again to suit it. Alright, this one. It's no good. It's not even worth saving. I can't get that pipe out and even if I do it's still a restriction so I'll bolt on the factory one that came with the 4AGE the openings look bigger it's still got material inside of it so it's gonna do its job I'm just gonna have to get either an extension made up or uh, a whole new section of exhaust so we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but for now I'll bolt what I can in